Good evening. I'm Marnie Hughes. We have a lot to get to tonight, starting with the newly released body camera video of a police shooting that will leave you speechless. An officer seemingly lured into a home by a man who then turns on him, shooting him at point blank range. The officer thankfully survived. But it was the beginning of a standoff in Phoenix that left nine total officers injured. A stunning reminder of the dangerous police face at any moment. And we do want to warn you, this body camera footage is very hard to watch. Newly released body camera video showing that shocking moment unfold, beginning with a call for help. Then the ambush. Who's all in the house? Huh? Who's all in the house? It's me. Who's he that officer racing for cover. Nine, nine, nine. I've been shot. Nine, nine, nine. Police say he was shot several times but survived. Oh. The chilling moment. Who's all in the house? Who's he just the beginning of a lengthy standoff. An adult male came to the door holding a baby, an infant. Um, he placed that infant on the ground in front of the front door and then walked out towards the officers where they began detaining him. The suspect would open fire again, hitting more officers. Four directly with gunfire and four indirectly with uh, ricochet or shrapnel, bullet shrapnel. Then later turned the gun on himself. A woman inside also died later in the hospital. The baby now with the Department of Child Safety. Nine, nine, nine. I've been shot. Nine, nine, nine. Tonight, the Phoenix Police Department grateful that all of its own are okay. A 26 second reminder of just how quickly the job can turn. Sergeant Andy Williams is with the Phoenix Police Department, and he is joining us live to talk more about what happened on Friday night. Sergeant Williams, we appreciate your time tonight. Uh, this video is shocking, to say the least. What was your immediate reaction uh, when you watched what happened on Friday unfold? Um, I think I had the same reaction as everybody had to seeing that video, which is um, it's shocking, it's horrifying uh, to see the total lack of regard for human life. And it is amazing that, especially that first responding officer, uh, wasn't injured more severely given the fact that he was shot basically at point blank range. Yeah, absolutely. It is a miracle that he's still alive. Um, he, he did suffer serious injuries. Um, he wasn't even able to draw his weapon. Uh, basically, the only thing he could do at that point was uh, get away and get to safety. Tell me more about that officer and how he's doing tonight. Um, so he, he has been discharged from the hospital. His spirits are high. Uh, he's, he's recovering, but uh, he has suffered uh, significant injuries. Uh, it's still uh, yet to be determined what his future looks like moving forward. Have you spoken with him directly? I have not spoken with him directly. Um, his chain of command has been in communications with him, and I'm told his spirits are high. Mm. What about the other officers who were injured? Also, uh, good spirits all around. They're, they're staying in contact with each other. Um, you know, we are a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood, and we all look out for each other. And um, like you said, it's a miracle, and uh, we're just incredibly happy that, um, you know, while they're, they've been injured seriously, everyone uh, on our side got to keep their lives that night. Mm -hmm. Sergeant, we are looking at some of the images of officers helping injured officers away from that scene uh, who had been shot. Uh, what are the discussions happening internally in the department after you all go through something like this? Um, so uh, one thing we always do is after a large event like this, we have a tactical review committee that's gonna break it down. We're gonna look at all that body-worn camera. We're gonna talk to everyone who's been involved and see what we can learn from this, what we can do better moving forward so we can be uh, better prepared to serve the community as safely as possible. What more can you share about the shooter and what you've learned in the investigation so far and why he did this? Yeah, that's the big question on everyone's mind is why. And um, when you see something that's just so shocking and unbelievable, uh, you know, he he shot this woman, then he he lures the police to, the, to his house, 
uh, as they approach, he, he fires upon this officer point blank. Then he shoots at another group of officers who are trying to rescue that baby, his own child from the doorstep, shooting at these officers who are just, you know, feet away from that, his own child laying on the ground. Um, something like motive or, or the reasons why he did wh why he did what he did, I, I don't think uh, we'll ever know that. What about his brother, who was apparently also on the scene? Um, what more can you tell us about him and also the woman who was killed? Um, yeah, so that woman was his uh, estranged girlfriend. Um, she was uh, struck by gunfire inside the house and dis uh, pronounced deceased. Um, his brother was the one that came out holding the child. Um, he cooperated with officers. He had cooperated at the scene. He, he was injured um, at the scene as well by some of that ricocheting gunfire. Um, but he is uh, okay now. How about the baby? The baby was uninjured, thank, uh, thankfully. Our special assignments officers, SWAT team, they were able to rescue that baby from the front doorstep and get it out of harm's way. Had you all ever been called to this house before? Any other incidents prior? I'm not aware of any other specific incidents uh, at this residence. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if this does anything, it... it points out once again the dangers of the job and how quickly things can turn. Um, what is your message to the officers tonight uh, involved, not just in your department, but nationwide, because this is not an isolated incident. Uh, we're seeing things like this happen in other states and other communities. Um, yeah, I think my message is, uh, you know, before body cams, it was hard to imagine things like this happening, but now we get to see them uh, you know, every, the community, everyone gets to see these terrible situations that officers walk into. And uh, we're often faced with these tense, uncertain circumstances where we only have a portion of the information or we have bad information. And those officers are, are tasked with making split second, you know, life altering decisions. And um, it, it just shows how quickly a situation can escalate and go go terribly wrong. It is a miracle that all of the officers survived, yet you say uh, your colleague has a long road ahead. Sergeant Andy Williams, thank you to you for joining us. Our best to you and your department as you continue to investigate this. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.